Hello Internet, um, I just got a Chiapa Rhino the other day and I thought I would put a video up on YouTube about it. Um, this is my first video like this, so it's a little awkward, um, just bear with me. Um, the, I decided to do it because the, the, the Chiapa, Chiapa Rhino is a pretty new and interesting design for a gun and um, in doing my research, I've, you know, I've been interested in getting one for a while and there's just not that much stuff out there to read or to watch or to get any kind of impression of it and there's so few in the country at this point that you know it's finding one at a gun shop or you know getting being able to kind of evaluate one before you buy it is kind of tough to do right now so um, I thought there'd probably be some guys out there that want to see a video on it so um, I thought I'd put this together so like I said it's my first video um, so uh, you know if it's awkward or whatever just kind of I'm apologizing in advance so um, alright uh, so let's get started so this is the box it comes in, Kiapa Firearms. It's just a standard plastic case. Open it up. What do you have in there? comes with a pretty decent leather holster. Um, it's pretty rigid, um, which does contribute to bluing wear, which I'll talk about later. But um, it's actually, the build quality is pretty good. Um, it's an outside the waistband holster. I usually go inside, but, um, you know, if you're wearing a jacket or something, this would work. Or whatever style of carry you want, that would work fine, it's pretty decent quality. Um, you get a cleaning rod, so, I mean, it's like a dollar at Walmart, so not a big deal there. And then you get this uh, instruction manual. Not the highest production values, looks like it was printed on a 15-year-old inkjet, but Kiapa um, is a pretty small, family-owned uh, Italian company. I'm not really sure on the, the relationship between Kimar and Kiapa, there's something, I mean, because the gun says it's built by Kimar, but... Um, Kiapa is a firearm manufacturer too, so I'm not really sure what goes on there. It's distributed by um, some company in Dayton, Ohio, I think. But anyway, so that's the manual. Um, it does have some interesting instructions. One of the instructions it gives you is how to hold it. Um, if I can find that. It gives you important grip instructions. It's telling you uh, specifically how to hold this gun because it is a little bit different. Um, and I've heard apparently that, I mean, obviously with the revolver, you, you know, you don't want to put your fingers up underneath the, the cylinder when it's firing, really, um, in front of the chamber, so, because of the, the blast coming down. And with, with this one especially, um, with the barrel being on the, the 6 o'clock position, that the blast coming out of there is going to be even stronger because it's, you know, that much closer to your hand. So, anyway, this is the uh, presentation you get when you first get it. I'll slide that out of the way. And the gun itself is this guy. So I kind of have some notes um, to try to make this a little less awkward. Um, first things first, I thought I would talk about the appearance of it. That's the first thing most people notice, is that it is an ugly gun, or it's weird looking, or something like that. Personally, I think it's pretty cool looking. It looks like something out of like a sci-fi movie. You know, I'm not really into, like, anime and sci-fi and all that stuff, but, I mean, it's just, it's cool looking, you know. It looks like something from the future. Um, so I think that's pretty sweet about it. The reason it looks this weird, if you're not familiar with the gun, and this has been safety checked, um, I'm not going to show you, because I was going to show you that later, but um, it, the cylinder is empty. The reason it looks like this is because you'll see the barrel. Uh, it's not really focusing. The barrel is actually at the 6 o'clock position in the gun, Whereas, obviously, with a normal revolver, it's going to be at the 12 o'clock, up top. Um, the, the whole sort of point of this gun is that having the barrel down low, it reduces the recoil and the muzzle flip um, and makes follow-up shots a lot easier. This is a 357 Magnum, so coming out of a snub nose, um, the, the, you know, maximizing your control is, um, is pretty critical in those follow-up shots. And so this one was designed by Emilio Ghisoni, an Italian designer who um, is more famous for having designed the Mateva Unica and uh, the 2006 M revolvers, which kind of have this similar, like, futury weird look. Um, and someday I'm going to own one, but, you know, they're going for like $1,700 right now. So in the meantime, this will hold me over. Um, so, yeah, you got this kind of weird looking gun here um, with the barrel underneath. Uh, the grip is kind of bizarre looking, but I'll get to that in a minute. It works. Um, you have the hammer actually serves as a sight. It's actually, I shouldn't even call it a hammer. It's not even a hammer. It's a cocking lever. But uh, it serves as the rear sight. Um, it's not really focusing that sight picture too well. But this part here, 
that is the sight, the rear sight. Um, another, another interesting feature of this, going with the sort of uh, futuristic look, is the cylinder is actually like a hexagon. It's not round. It's um, got more of a flat profile than most revolvers, which is an effort to make it more uh, concealable, able to slip into a holster easier, into a waistband, what have you. So, another interesting design feature there. Um, I was going to compare it with sort of the archetypal um, snub nose revolver. I've got a detective special here. Um, I was going to use this for size comparison and just sort of a design comparison. Um, you can see they're pretty similar in size. The Rhino is thicker, I think. Just feels thicker in the hand. It really, um, I don't have one with me, but it feels sort of like, you know, a Glock subcompact in terms of width, weight, just all of it. Um, you can kind of see the difference here between a, a, the uh, Detective Special. This one's from 1934, actually, and, uh, you know, this 2010 Kiapa Rhino. Um, so yeah, uh, you can see the cylinders round, you know, there's just a lot of differences here. Weight-wise, um, this one's definitely heavier. This one's lighter, um, which makes sense. I mean, it is less massive when you look at it from the side like that, or from the, the rear. Um, so that's that size comparison. Another one, a lot of people carry PPS. That's my personal carry weapon. Um, that's just another size comparison for you there. This is not a pocket gun by any means. It's too big. It's kind of heavy. Um, good holster gun, sure, but you're not going to be slipping in your pocket. Um, there you go. You can see the PPS is known for being slim, and this is thicker than that. So um, that gives you any. Uh, they're about the same weight, I would say. This one probably is a little bit heavier, but um, I carry this thing, you know, every day, and it's not the lightest thing in the world. But I don't notice it. I have an MTAC holster, and it feels great. So um, I'm pretty confident that with uh, if this holster is comfor comfortable, I haven't tried it yet, that this it won't, carrying this thing won't be a problem. Um, I'll get to that a little bit later, though. There's some other issues with carrying this that I'll address. But uh, that's what I'm, that's kind of an overview of the size. It's hard, I know, in these YouTube videos to get a sense for the scale of some of these guns. So, um, And my hands aren't huge. They're normal size, I would say. And so that gives you any idea. All right, moving on. Um, Moving on to ergonomics, um, the grip is one of those things that you first notice because it doesn't look like, should have pulled out my Python too, but you know, the, the typical revolver grip, or you might have those rubber ones too, but you know, the grip is, is different, but honestly, it's one of the most comfortable guns I own, and I own a lot, so well, probably the most comfortable gun I've ever held even. The grip is, um, I was comparing it to my Luger earlier, the, uh, it's sort of a similar angle to that, but the shape is a little bit different. But it just fits my hand perfectly. It's like, it's honestly one of the best feeling guns I've ever held. Um, it's made out of rubber, so that helps too. It is kind of, it's a nice texture. It's soft in your hand. It's not like a, um, a real abrasive plastic with stippling and all that. It's just, it's really pleasant to hold. I mean, you're just holding it and it's like you're not even holding anything. I just can't go on enough about how ergonomic this grip is. Um, another ergonomic feature that's a little unique with this gun is the cylinder release, is this lever here. You pull it down, and you pop the cylinder out like that. And there you can see, I wasn't lying, that the cylinder is empty. And you can also, this is confusing to do, the cylinder is a hexagon. Six sides. So, um, anyway, so that's the cylinder release back there. You push that back in. Um, I've already shown you the sights, sort of, but I'll try to show you again here. Um, this rear cocking lever here serves as the rear sights, and the sight picture is pretty good actually. I mean, it's definitely a combat um, sight system where the, the emphasis is on just seeing it, and it's really big and being able to see it and get a shot off really quick. But um, the sights actually work really well. The other thing, um, kind of related to the grip angle and just the overall ergonomics of the grip, is this is by far like the most pointable gun that I've ever held. I think. Um, I mean, you can even just see sort of that like you know, when you have your finger up here like you should when you're holding the gun, you're not shooting it, the, uh, the, the barrel is actually basically exactly where you're pointing. So, you know, you don't even have to look. You just pull the gun up, and it's just pointing exactly where your finger is pointing. That's um, due in part to the grip angle, due to the low 6 o'clock uh, barrel position. Um, it's just, it's perfect. I mean, for me at least, it's probably, you know, your mile.